All right, so let's talk a little bit about electrode setup options and in terms of the different things that you're going to include in your documentation. So certainly all these terms up here, unipolar, bipolar, quadrupolar, and dual bipolar are types of documentation that you might use when you're describing your electrode placement and setup in your, your notes. Uh, the first one to go over is unipolar. So with regards to unipolar, uh, one of the classic setups that this would refer to is iontophoresis. Uh, the concept of unipolar means that the electrode is traveling uh, from one pole of the electrode to the other. So it's unidirectional or it's one directional versus a bipolar, which means it's bidirectional, such as with alternating current. So if something is considered to be monophasic, it's usually associated with some type of unipolar electrode setup. Uh, so as you're, you're thinking about that, um, you might think about uh, some different things that have this unipolar setup, such as iontophoresis, high volt pulsed current is another example. Uh, in some regards, microcurrent um, is set up in a monopolar uh, electrode placement setup way. Uh, but those are some common ones. If you're dealing with galvanic, it could certainly be a continuous phase of direct current. But of these options, definitely the one that I would highlight would be iontophoresis. That's going to be your one that's traditionally associated with a unipolar setup, monophasic setup. And in particular, it does matter in these cases as to which electrode is red for positive and which, which electrode is black for negative because that has to be associated with the medication underneath the electrode and you're trying to repel uh, the medicine into the tissue, trying to permeate the tissue further with that setup. So that's an example of unipolar setup. But let's talk about something that will be more common and that is going to be your bipolar setup. So with bipolar, uh, we know we're dealing with two electrodes uh, via one channel. Uh, so that uh, would apply there. Uh, also would apply to unipolar. As we get to quadrupolar and dual bipolar, we know that we're dealing with four electrodes. So with this, with two electrodes, you can see in this case, if an individual had pain over the cervical spine in the middle, and let's say this is approximately, looks like about the C5 to C8 um, segmental range. If the pain was centered around the middle, so let me... Um, let me highlight this. So let's say you had some pain around that area. You could use an alternating current with the electrodes to flip back and forth between the positive and the negative electrodes. Uh, and that would occur, uh, uh, depending on the pulses per second, uh, between the positive and the negative phase for that. I do want to point out this would generally be safe uh, for the spinal cord because the bone is covering up the spinal cord. But if there were the case of a laminectomy or something where the bone would be exposed, um, you wouldn't do this setup necessarily. The other time you wouldn't do this setup is if there's some type of metal screws or rods or other things like that within the spine, you likely wouldn't do any e-stem procedure where you're crossing over the spinal cord. Now you still could do e-stem around the spine, but you'd likely do that longitudinally on the right or left side. Uh, so as long as the um, bone and the lamina in particular is protecting the spinal cord, and as long as there isn't any other metal that would interfere with the flow of electricity, it's safe to do this bipolar setup. So we would say that this would be associated typically with a lot of the uh, currents such as, uh, this would be a great setup for traditional TENS, high rate or low rate. Uh, you could definitely do pre-modulate it with this um, setup. Uh, you could do some other setups, but traditionally when we're talking about a bipolar setup, we're dealing with a small area that would do well with an alternating current such as TENS or pre-mod. Uh, 
Now let's say in, in this scenario though, they also had, besides cervical pain, they also had, um, I'll just make something up here, maybe they had some uh, right shoulder pain. Uh, so in this case, you could have one channel that's focusing on that, and then you could have a second channel that's focusing on another setup. Uh, so what would this be called? This would actually fit under dual bipolar because you're doing two channels, so channel one, let's say, and channel two, and that would be two separate bipolars. And you would also have separate parameters, uh, separate settings for that, and you'd set up each one of those at a time, and you turn, so turn the intensity up for the cervical spine at one point, then you turn the intensity for the shoulder at a separate point. So that would be an example of a dual bipolar, where you have one channel, then you have a second channel, but they're not necessarily connected. Another example is what if you had someone with a um, car accident uh, scenario, uh, where they had whiplash at the cervical spine, and they also had some pain at the lumbar spine. You might do a dual bipolar setup here, so you have two electrodes, or one channel at the low back and two electrodes for a second channel at the cervical spine or a different scenario with that. So that's an example of bipolar and dual bipolar setups. All right, so let's go through a slightly different scenario. What if someone had left shoulder or periscapular pain and the pain was maybe centered um, around that area, posterior shoulder pain? How would you best isolate uh, this this scenario. So you think you well you want two different channels going on you want to interfere there so you'd have channel one crossing like that at a certain frequency and then you have channel two crossing like that at a slightly different frequency and keep in mind the difference between those two frequencies would be known as the vector frequency or a lot of times refer to that as the beat frequency. So even though this will be a medium interferential current, so this is for an IFC setup, that you have two channels, channel one and channel two, you're trying to isolate the frequency to interfere around that area. And by doing that in an IFC manner, you hope to minimize the accommodation and to make it more comfortable for the patient. Uh, so this would be a quadrupolar setup. Let me highlight that. This will be a quadrupolar setup. And a quadrupolar setup is always going to involve, as it implies, quadrupolar for electrodes. And the location is going to deal with where do those four electrodes, or I should say those two channels, intersect. And we know that this is delivered in an alternating current, so it's going to bounce between the two electrodes in channel two and bounce between the two electrodes in channel one. And so that is your quadrupolar setup. It's most associated with an IFC. However, I will also add that sometimes you can do a quadrupolar setup with a Russian or an NMES. And so with that, you're trying to target uh, the area, and so you, you might set that up into four electrodes around the area, or you might go, let's say, over the quadriceps and hamstrings for more of a dual bipolar setup. So there's some variation as to where you might uh, apply that. All right, so here's another example. What if uh, an individual had low back pain? Let me zoom in on this a little bit. So what if they had low back pain that was centered right in the middle there? What you might want to do is take channel one here and send it interferential that way. And you take channel two here and send it that way so that the current interferes or creates this vector right around the, the middle of their spine, around where their pain is. So you could do a quadrupolar setup such as this. Or another option is, what if the individual had paraspinal spasms or erector spinae spasms? Maybe they were in a car accident and they had pain on the right and left side, just right along the muscles in their back. So what you may do 
is you may set up channel 1 there and you may set up channel 2 there and let's say you set this up as a tens so which kind of setup would this represent yes that would be a dual bipolar because channel 1 and channel 2 most machines you'll set those up one and then two. Some machines uh, you'll be able to set those up simultaneously or if you're using one of those portable TENS unit you could turn the knob for channel one and turn the knob for channel two as a setup. Uh, so that's a, an example of how the electrodes may look like this and there may be four but as a clinician coming in the next day you need to know well do I set them up in a quadrupolar manner for IFC or a dual bipolar manner like that. And you can also imagine that you're never going to set up IFC in a dual bipolar manner. Uh, so dual bipolar is not for IFC because you're not going to get any interference of those electrodes. Okay, so let's go through some other examples. So an individual has uh, shoulder pain right there. You could go from channel 1 to channel 2 uh, and this would represent a bipolar setup. Or what if they still had that pain right there? And so now you take, uh, and it's hard to look at the, the colors here, but you have channel one going like that. And then you have channel two going like that. So you have four electrodes, two channels, and this would be associated with a quadrupolar setup. So this on the right, looks something like an IFC setup and this on the left looks more like a TENS setup. But I would point out neither of these really look like a Russian or NMES uh, setup if you're trying to target the motor points and get muscular recruitment. But speaking of Russian, what could you do if you wanted to, for example, um, get more of a recruitment for the wrist and finger flexors. So you could look at this one. So you could see, um, you could ignore the, the red and the black for electrodes because this is probably going to be set up an alternating current such as a medium frequency burst current that Russian stem is. And you're trying to focus it on this area, trying to keep at least a little distance, uh, at least one to two inches between the electrodes because you want a better depth and you can see that the second electrode here is not in this area because that's where really the finger and wrist flexors are so the tendons themselves are here whereas the muscle bellies are more here so this could be a setup right around the motor point to uh, get the current flowing for Russian stimulation uh, and then let's scroll down a little bit here uh, now what would this do so you have a setup here we have channel one let's say so you have channel one there and you have channel two right there so how would you describe that setup that is also a dual bipolar setup uh, so why would you why would you want to set it up like this uh, maybe the individual has spasms and so you want to set an on time for let's say five sec and then you want to do an off for five seconds. So this is going to fatigue those paraspinal muscles. They may be contracting too much. They might be hypertonic or facilitated. And now you want to inhibit them. You want to downregulate their spasm and their spasticity. So you'd set up channel one and set up channel two independently. So that's an example of another dual bipolar setup using Russian stimulation. Then for our last page, I uh, have another example. So uh, an individual looks like they're wearing jeans or, or something, uh, but they're sitting in this long arc quad position. So their knee is over the edge. And then the electrodes, um, now some people would uh, have some concern about this placement uh, because the electrodes aren't necessarily longitudinal. And we do know that electrodes longitudinal with the muscle do contract a little bit better. But I think a lot of individuals like to set up this way because you're taking a, a relatively big electrode electrode and you're spanning over a large surface area. Uh, so for that reason, and this is generally right over uh, what would be considered the motor point 
for the VMO, uh, and then you're getting uh, another electrode very far away. So what's the benefit of getting two electrodes this far apart? You're going to get a greater depth of the penetration because it's going the electricity is going to have to travel further from one to two. So you're likely going to span over a greater number of motor units. You're going to recruit more. Uh, might be a little more uncomfortable, but for Russian, your goal is to get large recruitment. And in this position, you might do that. So this would be considered a bipolar setup. So this is one option for that. Then here you go, this is another option. So even though this uh, does appear to be one, two, three electrodes, we're actually still gonna consider this four electrodes because uh, the, the thing that's a little trickier to see here is that this electrode right here actually has two separate lead wires going into it. So you have some type of setup. Now I can't tell with all the wires where they're going exactly, uh, but I'm thinking that the one channel is going here and the other channel is going here uh, for this dual bipolar setup. However, they could be a, con uh, excuse me, a quadrupolar setup uh, and more of a crisscross uh, pattern. Uh, but considering this picture uh, in both quadriceps are set up, this seems like a common NMES uh, type of setup either to uh, get a better quadriceps contraction, or maybe this is done after an exercise session for more of the benefit to improve the recovery. Uh, a lot of people are using NMES or Russian to just promote recovery by getting more circulation and more contraction and twitching of those fibers to help move the lactic acid and other things like that out of the structure. Um, so I'm not sure of the intent, but still we would consider these four electrodes, even though this one is one surface electrode, there are two lead wires going into that. Uh, and that could be an example of that. Uh, some people for that reason will sometimes call this triphasic, even though there's only a positive and a negative phase, um, they will refer to this as more of a um, triphasic. Uh, but ultimately we're dealing with some type of dual bipolar or quadrupolar setup. Uh, so I hope that helps. That's just a, a summary of the electrodes and you will include this uh, in your documentation uh, and describing the electrodes will be included uh, as anatomical terms as well. So you might call this proximal electrode setup along with a, a distal electrode setup of um, the one channel over the VMO motor point and the second channel over the VL motor point or you could say distal quadriceps belly. Uh, there's variations on this and some clinicians are actually even taking pictures. Some EMRs even allow you to take pictures of the electrode setups as well. So I hope this was a good summary for you. Please reach out with any questions and I'll see you online for the next video. Thanks. Here's a quick video on how to use the portable TENS unit or in this case our TENS 7000 unit. Uh, each different portable unit will have different parameters associated with it. So with this one you'll notice that there are five different modes. There is your, your burst mode, normal mode, modulated mode, and you can set some parameters with that. Uh, there's SD1 and SD2. Um, so with that, uh, for the machine, in order to turn the machine on, you'll notice that when you first have it, it is off. You have to flip that open, and then you have to rotate this just on a little bit. You'll notice that on this machine, it goes 0 through 8. Because the dial is so small, each number, 1 represents 10 milliamps. So if I were to turn this up to 80, that would be an 8 on the dial right there. Once you have the machine on, you see that you have different modes that you can select. So on here, if I were to hit mode, it would change to normal, it would change to modulation, SD1, SD2, or burst. So the normal mode is your traditional TENS mode or symmetrical, biphasic, with a rectangular format.
Uh, you can set, set the rate to be low. Uh, you can so if you hit set right here, it's going to go between um, the width or the rate. And if I want a low rate, generally two to ten is going to get that motor tens more for strengthening and, and more for endogenous opioids. But let's say I want to go high rate tens. In order to do that, I could press one time, or if I hold the up button down after a while. Let's see, hold it, then it'll start to go fast. And I could take this up to, let's say, 100, or close to 100. Okay, I could set the time to be more or less. 20 is generally a good one. Now here's where I could set the pulse width. This is in microseconds. The max this machine is going to do is going to be 300 microseconds, which would be three hundredths of a one million microsecond unit. I could also go down. Oops, I hit set. I can go down here. And the lower I go down here, the less likely it is going to attract or recruit any pain fibers. Also, the less likely it is to recruit any motor fibers. So if I go too low on this, I'm going to be only recruiting sensory type fibers, which can sometimes be more comfortable. Uh, you can see the lowest, it would go to 50 microseconds. Uh, and 50 microseconds would also be considered a very narrow pulse width.